Asthma is a common health problem. It affects many people from all walks of life, young and old, regardless of sex or race. There are a number of questions that people normally ask about asthma. First, what exactly is it? Let's take a look at a normal day in Ali's life. Ali suffers from asthma and his attacks are quite regular. Asthma is a condition caused by the inflammation of the airways, which leads to a cough and difficulty in breathing. This happens when the body reacts to certain triggers, like dust, smoke or exercise, which stimulates an asthma attack. During an attack, the person wheezes and often feels a tightening in the chest. Let's see how breathing works. Oxygen reaches our bloodstream and body parts through our lungs via a network of airways. When we breathe in, air moves down our windpipe and into the airways or the bronchi. These airways then branch into smaller and smaller airway tubes known as bronchioles. From here, the air moves further down and finally reaches the air sacs at their ends, where the oxygen enters our bloodstream. At the same time, carbon dioxide, the waste gas, moves back in the opposite direction. Hence, just as oxygen is taken in, carbon dioxide is breathed out. The walls of these airways contain cells that are loaded with chemicals. This is how asthma attack happens under certain situations. The chemicals in the cells are released causing inflammation. Inflamed airways, when exposed to certain trigger factors, leads to difficulty in breathing due to the contraction of muscles. Another type of inflammatory reaction that occurs is when the inner lining swells up and phlegm is released into the airways. Such inflammatory changes develop slowly and often takes a long time to reverse. Let's now see what causes it in the asthma attack in the first place. When you have asthma, your airways are more sensitive and have a tendency to react to certain substance in the environment that would not affect a person without this problem. This stimulus which brings on an attack of asthma is called the trigger. There are many types of triggers. Some cause immediate asthmatic symptoms which last only a short time. These include exercise, certain medications and cigarette smoke. Other triggers not only cause immediate symptoms of asthma, but can also increase inflammation of the airways. Such triggers include substances that cause allergic reactions, such as dust mites, pollens, molds, animal fur and certain food and additives. Sudden changes in the weather can also trigger off an attack. Amongst these trigger, dust mites are important and are commonly found in pillows, beddings and cushions. Medications like aspirin and beta blockers are the most common medications that can trigger asthma. Consult your doctor before starting off on any medications if you are an asthmatic. And what about infections? Flu and colds are common triggers. So, if you are asthmatic, try to avoid contact with people suffering from these infections. Now that we know what causes asthma, the next step is to figure out how to control it. There are two kinds of medication. The preventer medication and the reliever medication. The preventer medication treats the underlying airways inflammation not the symptoms. Preventers work slowly and they need to be taken regularly. It often takes several weeks before you start to get the benefits of a preventer. The main form of preventer medication is corticosteroids. Corticosteroids reduce the inflammation in your airways thereby decreasing the swelling and production of mucus. This helps to keep asthma symptoms away. Being a preventer, corticosteroids will not help you if discontinued when feeling well and resumed when having an attack of asthma. Remember, follow your doctor's advice and take it regularly as prescribed.
Corticosteroids are not intended for relief of an acute asthma attack. Failing to take preventive medication can lead to losing control of asthma, which can be dangerous. You may have heard that corticosteroids cause a number of side effects. This is only true when taken in high dosages, usually in form of tablets, over a long period of time. Taking inhaled corticosteroids can sometimes cause hoarseness of voice or sore throat, and this can be prevented by gargling and spitting out after taking the medication. The dosage of corticosteroids is given in accordance to the severity of your asthma. The second type of medication is known as the reliever medication. Unlike preventers, relievers usually work quickly and have little or no effect on the inflammation in the airways. However, relievers help to reduce the symptoms of asthma by relaxing the muscles in the airways and opening them up. This allows more air to flow freely. To get the full effect of the medication, make sure you know how to use the inhaler correctly. This is done easily in four steps. Step 1. Breathe out gently, but not all the way. Ease the air out, don't force it. Step 2. Shake the inhaler and raise it to your mouth. Step 3. Breathe in deeply and press the metal canister down at the same time. Step 4. Hold your breath for 10 seconds and breathe out. The advantage of inhalers over pills is that inhalers have no side effects and the medication is delivered directly to the lungs. Thus, it ensures the minimal dosages and fast reaction. If there are any problems, consult your doctor. Your doctor may tell you about an asthma management plan. So what is it? It is a list of things that you should do to keep your asthma under control and what you should do if an attack occurs. Here is an example of a six-step asthma management plan. Step 1. Know how severe your asthma is. If you need asthma medication most weeks of the year and wake up at nights with an attack and have needed urgent medical attention for asthma in the past year or so, you probably have moderate to severe asthma. Step 2. Achieve your best lung function. When you are at your best, you should ideally have no symptoms, best possible peak flow measurements. Step 3. Avoid trigger factors. Find out what sets off your asthma and try to avoid it. Step 4. Stay at your best. If you need medications, these should be as simple, safe and effective as possible. Inhaled medications are recommended. Step 5. Know your action plan. Work out an action plan with your doctor to recognize when your asthma is getting worse. Learn how to treat it quickly and know how and where to get the right medical assistance. Ask your doctor for an action plan card. Any change in your asthma medication should be carried out under the supervision of your doctor as part of your asthma management plan. Step 6. Check your asthma regularly. Asthma can usually be kept under control. Follow your six-point management plan and see your doctor for regular checkups, not just in emergencies. With a comprehensive asthma management plan and regular medication, asthma can be controlled. So, don't let it control you. Live a quality and normal life.